It's quite a privilege to, and a, and a responsibility to bring um, a light to someone's space that they, they, they come in every day and they go out every day and they spend time in. And it, it, it's, an, it's a sort of accompanying them on that journey. An interior space has a great deal of intimacy to it and so the light must be um, must work at a very intimate scale um, because they might be literally right next to it you know if they're waiting for a lift or if they're having a coffee they're right next to this light and I, I like to put light in there that makes them look beautiful where they feel like it's not it's not glaring, there's not too much light, there's light and shade, so, uh, so people can gravitate to where they feel settled. And so then conversations and um, relationships can occur within that sense of an intimate space. Again, it's about creating space within the interiors um, to soften them, to uh, find where the density and heaviness is in the current design or in the proposed design and, and then see how we can um, articulate that with light and space. So, so decompress that. So allow the, the architecture to breathe and perhaps to simplify it, to unify it. And then there's the creation of a very subtle movement in the space um, and give it an expression that um, then takes it from dense and static to uncompressed, so from compressed to uncompressed and then to um, allow some subtle movement in there because the movement is what helps people feel that flow, that, that, that this is not a space that is for, um, for getting stuck um, in whatever they're trying to do, whether it's go shopping or having a holiday in a hotel or preparing for work as they enter a building or preparing to go home when they finish work. The difference between uh, how we approach, um, say, a commercial lobby or a shopping center versus, say, a casino, it is, uh, to me, it's about um, the hierarchy of brightness and where does the lighting sit within the brightness of the space. Um, because there's a lot of ambient light, there's a lot of functional lighting that people need to, um, you know, walking through the space or certain areas, cafes and restaurants. And those spaces have a kind of an ambience that exists that we're trying to find. We don't want to try and overcome that. We want to bring a focus to it, bring a place where people feel settled and then they allow the functional lights to do whatever they need to do. So quite often there's the architecture and that is, has, um, has the material it has. And then there's the functional lights which shine down generally. And, um, and so we fill the transition between the architecture and the functional lighting. So it, it creates a point of focus, a point of settlement. When we see a sunset or a sunrise, we are drawn to it because the light is at our scale almost. It's down with us and it's shining right at our level. Um, when it's up high, we go indoors. It's too big, too bright. Um, just like any type of sort of architectural scale, we're drawn to scale that matches us. Um, it's why kids love little cardboard boxes and dogs love dog houses. Um, and we like uh, residential houses with certain proportions. It, that scale is important to us. So when you see a sunrise and sunset, it attracts us. We're drawn to it, to go look at it. 
And when the light goes overhead, we, we withdraw and, and, and go away from it. So it's like this light in the background here. Um, that's the light I use to light my studio because it's at my level. It, it illuminates me where I am. Um, if I have a task and I need a light to come down and shine on my desk, then I do that. But all the light that I use is from where I'm at. So that's one layer of that consideration. And, and the purpose of that layer is because that's where the light is coming from anyway. Um, it's coming from the people. And so um, to have a light that's 10 meters up and high, it, 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 it's a meaningless uh, imposition of light. It doesn't, you know, and maybe it floods the place and it's fine, but, and maybe that is useful at times, but um, it doesn't contribute well to the feeling of uh, in the space. I'm an advocate of finding ways to get the light where the people are. You know, if I'm talking about a, a hotel casino or um, a hotel foyer, quite often they want it to, um, to be somewhat immersive or sit just in support of of everything else that's going on because those spaces can get quite busy. Um, but then there's times when it wants to, to lead, to become a more performative and have a, a stronger expression where it becomes um, not, a, it becomes an attractor, becomes something that is, is, develops a kind of vibration that people are pulled towards. Um, so that, uh, uh, that's the sort of next thing. Which layer does it live on? Which, where, where does it want to sit for its, 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 the majority of its rhythm? And, and do, is there any time where it wants to become performative? What we were asked is um, to light a foyer as part of uh, an, what's called an integrated resort development. Um, often known as a casino, and that is, uh, they asked for specifically an immersive space, a space that where you felt held um, by the light, you felt activated wherever you chose to look, however, there's many exits and entrances to this, um, so they wanted it from wherever you came, you saw something, you, something was activated. So it seemed like it needed more purpose, more embrace, more flow to it. And that's where we ended up with this curve. So now you start to see the curve becoming um, uh, more of a focus. Um, we saw how it reflects in the floor and it starts to quieten down the design. It starts to settle it. Um, we looked at different types of content on it, different things. Then we started to think, well, what else could go in this space? That's interesting, but it doesn't feel immersive yet. It doesn't feel like wherever you look, you'd, you'd, be, you'd see activation. Then we thought, let's have a think about the ceiling. What could we do with that? So we looked at this. What if we put light in all? So if you think there's the ceiling and the black parts are the gaps between the ceiling panels. So what if we put light in the gaps? This looked also quite beautiful. In the ceiling panels, we had to have a slight recess on the edges of the panels, so, and, and, the, the, and, and so the light doesn't cast onto the panels itself, um, but it, 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 it shoots straight down and doesn't illuminate anything around it. We then start to work out what the, the pixel pitch is, what the, uh, the resolution of the canvas is, um, what the size of the modules are, the LED modules, should it curve, should it facet, um, all of those sort of considerations and how will we structurally support it, um, how, will it um, how will it develop uh, to a place where, um, where people can experience uh, at a close proximity and from a distance. So we then started to just see would an object work would an object work in this space? Not, not just a, a skin or a texture. What if we made some three-dimensional object? And we played with that and I wasn't sure um, because it started to, that felt like it was dominating the space. It wasn't allowing the space 
to breathe and it was providing focus but it didn't sit at the right layer it didn't sit within the hierarchy of the space as it felt to be but it also needed something that was activated in the center um, similar to what they'd done in the past but that something couldn't be it, it would have to have the least amount of density have a have a have a flow to it have a um, a way of programming it, a way of it being there when when we wanted and not when we didn't. So not something that you have to build and structure and fabricate, it's just so that we can turn it on and turn it off. Then the last design we presented to them is this, which was the curving, embracing screen, a very simple expression of light that that is on that transitions from the ground to the sky. The sky, which is the ceiling, supports it, and the centerpiece is ephemeral. It is just light and water and motion. So that is where we, uh, we ended up with this design. And so here's some still images where you can see the water feature, the roof, the walls, the screen. Absolutely magnificent. So the content on the screen, so this is content we shot, 8K content. Um, that is the texture and light of Sydney. The bird on screen, which is a, an Australian lorikeet, um, that's the same thing that's on the ceiling. So you see the same color pattern on the ceiling. So the red of the bird is on the ceiling there. The green of the leaves is there. So the, 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 he's reversed, so his head, the blue bit, is on the right-hand side. So that's where you see the integration of the content and the technology where the bird, when the bird moves, the whole room moves. From there, we were eventually asked to do a, uh, a show, a performance based on Chinese New Year, which we did, and this was that show. So we designed the props, the, um, the performances, all of the drapes, all of the hand-drawn animations, all of this integrating into one space as a performance uh, which you can see ended up very beautiful. Um, so these are the dynamic range of possibilities in a space like this. Not everything, not every space needs something like this, um, but this called for that brief. Something that was immersive, something that was active, and something that was relatively simple. What I'd like you to consider when you finish this lesson is to start to notice the spaces you inhabit. For instance, where do you work? What's your space like where, do you, where you work? When you enter, is it, uh, is it expansive or is it contracted? Is the light restricted? Is there not much light? Is it cold? Are the windows clean? Are they not clean? Are they dirty? Um, is there a lot of uh, fluorescent light there? Does it flicker? What's your desk like? Where does that, do you work at a desk? What does that light look like? Do you have a desk lamp? Is there a fluorescent overhead? How does that, how does that feel? Notice the difference. And if you bring a light to work and you just light the area you need lit and maybe you take out that fluorescent bulb, if your uh, employer will allow, um, it might feel different. Once you become aware of that, you'll start to understand the difference and understand the quality. It begins with your awareness. And then we can get into the technical part of how we, uh, how we make a space that has the quality of light that encourages relationships, encourages expression and intimacy between people. Um, and it's not just between people, it's between employee and employer employer and employee, it's between boss and worker, it's between a person working on a construction site and a person living in a high-rise. It's all equal. Light is equal.